Not true. Eli Whitney did not. He did not invent the cotton gin. Here's the real story. Okay. Catherine Littlefield Green uh, was a single mother who ran a boarding house. Right. Eli Whitney was like a handyman guy who was one of her boarders. She like. Nanaro Mozart was busy whomping up biscuits and feeding the <laughs> kids and, you know, doing right, right. Stuff. But she came up with this idea. Of course, we know that, that the, the thing that made the cotton industry explode was the cotton gin because right. it was an incredibly difficult hand made process to pull the seeds out of the cotton. Mm-hmm. And she thought, well, there must be some way to make a little machine that would do that. Right. And she drew up plans for it and came up with the whole concept and hired Eli to build a prototype for her because, like I said, busy whomping up biscuits, right, right. To change the baby's diaper, feed the borders, right. And so, and Andy was a handyman, so he built it, right. And then he stole it, and then he patented it, and said he invented it, right. And if you went on Jeopardy and said his name, you would ring get the a bell ding. and get the two. But if you bucks. said what's her name, what's her name again? Catherine Littlefield Green. So there if I'm go. ever on Jeopardy, which I'm not planning on being, but if that ever comes <laughs> up, it would be the most happiest day for me. I would happily lose the point in order to explain why. To the millions of people watching yeah. Jeopardy. Yeah. Because that's... Um, so what... Is it? Is it something you like to do to, to, to look up these women? I do. Okay. I, I absolutely do. And, you know, it has relevance in my, my modern life, especially since I've become a film director mm-hmm. and have you know, seen, uh, so I'm part of a business that has an inequity so deep that they're being investigated by the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission and the ACLU in a, in a formal investigation of why is there such deep sexism in show business, particularly in hiring things like directors and writers and producers. And well, it's just, it's, um, well, the, like I watch a lot of older movies yeah, and all the editors are women. Yes, they were. Until... Yes, they uh, were. And then it changed. And then it changed. Things were, they were better in show business in every area in front of and behind the camera in the 1940s. Mm-hmm. We have gone backwards. Well, because there was more prestige and there was more money. And they always, it was always the same, you know, back in the in the 30s and 40s and 50s, it was always, well, men have to provide for the family. Yeah. And then there were two income households anyway. And yeah, but you have to ask yourself, why was, I'm saying there was more equity in the 40s, that there were right. more women in those jobs and more women in front of the camera. There right, were, but that's what, that was their rationale when, when the prestige became so great, oh. that then, then they're going to give it to all the men. Right. And then and the women are like, well, I could do that. Why can't I do that job? It's like, well, you should, uh, he has a family. I think, I think there's some truth in what you're saying, but I actually think there was a great deal of prestige at the time and that... There was a, the business was actually better run in the '40s, and it was more oriented towards actually making a profit, not making a killing, not making a tent pole that makes a ton of money but costs a ton of money, but actually profit and loss, return on investment, which is not. It's because the industry was much smaller. That makes smaller sense. Smaller and more rational, and yeah. you know, was started and, by guys in the garment business who lived or died based on return on investment.